post this stream in a few different places so that people know that we're live. And we should be good to go. So uh, yesterday I worked a lot on a file upload feature for Remake and I'm pretty excited uh, about how that turned out. Remake and, and um, how that turned out. Now I'm going to be uh, maybe planning to release that, I think. Um, but we'll see how things go. So let's open up uh, Terminal, go into GitHub, go into Remake Framework, and start up the server. Um, run dev. Okay, and we'll open up Sublime 2, our code editor, and open uh, Remake Framework. And let's just go and test out our file uploading. So we have localhost 3000, and then uh, we gotta get the currently logged in user, which I believe is um, Peter, Peter101. And then we're gonna say file, upload, I think it's test, is that true? File, upload, test. Okay, perfect. So now we're loading in this image and um, let's get another image too to test it out with so that we can switch back and forth. Um, let's see, fashion, fashion sounds good. Um, maybe like future fashion. I want like someone with a, an astronaut helmet or something. Um, hmm. Okay. How about astronaut? Yeah, this is better. So we'll just scroll down. Wait, I think I saw one. No, maybe not. Um, We'll go with three, two, one. Uh, geez. Let's see. Um, I don't know. This guy? <laughs> um, I wish we had astronaut fashion. Let's see. Astronaut fashion. Looks like there's no astronaut fashion. Okay, how about explore and give me like the most interesting images? That looks cool. Um, let's see, we'll just go with like maybe this or this. I don't know why I'm taking so long to come to come up with this image. Ah, uh, this one looks good. Okay, let's just do that. Now let's see what else this person did. Oh, that's cool. Load more photos. Hey, Night Owlies. Welcome to the stream. We're looking for a few sample images to test out <coughs> Remake's new file uploading feature with. What are you up to today? Um, oh, that's cool. It looks like a lightsaber, kind of. Okay, I think we have enough images now. Um, maybe bubbles. I like bubbles. You're going to try to day trade. Whoa, that's, uh, that's exciting, <laughs> to say the least. You know me in real life. Um, that's pretty cool. Who are you? How do I know you? Welcome to the stream. Um, whoever you are. Night Owlies. Who's a night who's a night owl who would day trade who I know? I don't really know a lot of day traders. Um, although maybe since you're trying day trading, you haven't day traded before. Um, you don't usually day trade. I always. I usually go to bed at 5 a.m. Uh, 
Are you, is your name Dan? Um, that's just a wild guess. Um, and you, and you like middle names? You like middle names. Um, I'm not sure. You go to bed, oh, wait, wait, wait. You go to bed at 5 a.m., so you have, like, a night job. Um, can you give me a hint, like, another hint? I know you, <laughs> I know you just gave me a few hints, but, uh, maybe another hint. You like my middle name. Uh... Have we talked about this recently? <laughs> I feel like I haven't talked about my middle name. Yeah. And you know what Docs is. What? I'm like thinking like you're this person and then you say Docs and I'm like, uh, I don't think that person knows what Docs means. Um, although I guess everyone will know what Docs means soon. I don't know, I'm sorry, I feel bad. Uh, you haven't seen me in a while. Um, but then how did you know about the stream? You must follow me on Twitter or something. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, can I give up? <laughs> um, I'm really excited to know. Facebook. But wait, how did you know that I was live if, um, I didn't post on Facebook? How did you find the stream? I just went live. Uh, and I didn't post on Facebook. Unless it auto-posted on Facebook. I don't think it did. Oh, he started following me. Samuel. Samuel. Uh, oh. Oh. Um, Samuel, like, uh... Oh man, I know, I know what your middle name is. It starts with a B, right? I, I used to call you that. Um, it's been a while. What, what did your... <laughs> okay, I won't, a T. A T, really? Oh yeah, T for me, yeah. Um, so wait, I can't, I can't say your middle name. Okay, I won't. Just trying to think. I'm like close. I was on the tip of my tongue, but I won't say it. Well, good. Yeah, it's great to have you. Thanks for stopping by the stream. Um, what are you? You're day trading, huh? That's risky in this climate, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, if you have the uh, the money, why not? Um, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> you want to hear, hear something uh, really sad? <laughs> so um, I will show you uh, something really sad. So I never think about um, shorting stocks, but I was right here, right here at 8.99 thinking about shorting Tesla. <laughs> Um, I was going to buy some put options right here, and I decided not to because one, it was too expensive, and two, it felt too risky. Like, there wouldn't, like, it'd have to go down a lot in order for me to make any money, so I decided not to, to do it. Yeah. Um, but that's the only recent investment thought I've had. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I think it could, yeah. I could see it going down here from here. Yeah. Um, I, I could see it. I could see uh, the stock market going down for like another six months, totally. Um, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, but then how am I supposed to know? No, it's true. 
Okay, let's see. Um, do, 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 chat. So can you hear it? It's pretty loud for you. Where the heck is this? Oh, sounds. There we go. Sounds are integrated. <laughs> Why do they have a sounds? Why don't they just have a notification slash sounds? <laughs> Weird. Um, okay. User joined. New followers. Okay. I'm going to do... Um, oops. User joined off and, well, I kind of like having user joined on actually. Wait, how did it turn back on? Enabled? Ugh. This is confusing a sec. Okay, but I'll turn chat messages off, because you're right. But how do I, I want to know when people join. But now I can't. Um, okay, let's save this. Go back into settings. User joined. So yeah, how have, oh wait, sound, here we go. It's the other tab. So how have you been? Uh, oh, and I didn't do this. I turn notifications off. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, it's just two tabs. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, how have you been? Um, Samuel. I can't dox you by saying Samuel because you already said it. So. Um, what have you been up to? What have you been working on? What have you been... Oh, okay. Okay, so let's uh, let's see. So, a couple things I want to get done today. Um, one, I kind of want to explore this. Um, we'll just call this uh, notes. Okay. Oops, I don't want notes handlebars. Ugh. What the heck? Okay, let's go here. Delete this. Remove. Okay. So I want to explore trigger save on change and I want to explore this. Because <clears throat> um, I want to make it easier to use um, those two things. These are fine, these are fine. Okay. Now the other thing I want to do is, um, I wrote it down. Uh, brainstorm using nearest instead of closest everywhere. Okay. Uh, new release with change log. Um, add file upload to features page and post about file upload feature. Okay, cool. So um, first thing first, trigger save on change. So this is um, an interesting one. So, hey, another TV viewer, welcome uh, to the chat. So trigger save on change. This is something I added to uh, input elements. So if you have a data uh, I attribute on it, you can say data I equals <coughs> trigger save on change. And it's gonna trigger save when this elements value changes. Um, now the problem with that is that I normally want it to save when, like by default, it should save on change. So that should be the default. Um, the, pro the problem with that though 
is that if we go to this main app, um, we have these uh, inline edit areas. So if I click one of these blocks, we get a little inline edit area. If I inspect that, we also have an input in here with a data I attribute. And this one doesn't trigger a, a save on change. Um, and the reason why is because it's going to sync its um, text with uh, this object above it. So you can see, um, what do we got? Card text. So it's going to sync right here with data O key card text. And it does it live. So if I put in new things, it's live updating that. Now, the reason that's good is because um, it's update, it, it allows us to update the data it allows us to update the data when we want to sync it back into the page so when I click save here we're going to take this attribute we're going to sync it back into the element that triggered it and then we want to save the page. But we don't want to save the page here because we want the ability to cancel this. And saving the page here after, <clears throat> you know, after I type something, it doesn't really do anything. Now the other issue is that, um, let's say I have an input on the page, right? So. Uh, just like a regular input, let's do um, style margin top uh, for rem div input, oops, input type text. And we'll set the value to blah. Okay, so let's say I have that. Oh, wait and let's put it above this uh, image so we can actually see it. Um, and <laughs> we want the margin bottom now to be four around. Okay, cool, so we have this blah. Now, do I want to trigger save <coughs> by default every time this changes? That's a lot of saves. It's a save for every single character we're making, we're gonna be making an Ajax call and potentially serializing the entire page, um, you know, if this object doesn't have an ID to it. So that's not great. So if we do add um, so if we do add this feature, hey at at ten, welcome to the chat. Um, let us know what you're working on today and if we can help you with anything. Um, so if we do make this the default, we need to at least consider um, adding a debounce for uh, input type text and text area. Um, I don't know. That, that would be fine for now. Um, and that debounce should probably be like a full second or something. <sighs> That's tough. So, because it's still a full page save. But I guess that would be kind of, you know, that would kind of be worth it. The other option is like consider not making it. <laughs> the default for uh, input type text and text area. And then for like input type file, obviously, or like a select element, you know, sure, right? Um, but the other problem um, is this uh, pop-up. So one thing we could do with this pop-up 
is we could say, okay, we're going to have, um, we're going to have the data on change, trigger on save, uh, or sorry, trigger on, trigger save on change be the default. If, um, if you're outside of an element with a data uh, O ignore on it, data O ignore means that while you can still save the data inside of here, it's not going to be serialized um, by default. I don't like that really because that's not what data o, o ignore means. Ignore, data O ignore just means like if you're serializing the rest of the page and you come across a data O ignore, just ignore it. Just don't output any data from it. It doesn't mean prevent, you know, saving from working ordinarily inside of it. So I don't like that idea. But what we could do is we're actually constructing this editable area. So we could just very easily say data I, you know, don't trigger save on change. Um, so let's say don't trigger save on change to editable popovers. Okay. The other thing I want to brainstorm is, uh, oops. So the other thing I want to brainstorm, um, is whether the file upload is easy enough to use. So I kind of like this idea, um, making this the default. Um, I think it should still be the default for input type text and text area. So we'll just say no to that. Um, consider adding a debounce for, hey, Commander Root, welcome to the chat. Um, welcome back. Uh, debounce for input type text and text area. So I like this idea. Uh, make this one second. Um, the only problem with making it a full one second is if someone types something like, something in really quick and then immediately closes the tab. Um, it's possible, you know, if they do that in less than a second, whatever they just typed in isn't going to be saved. Um, I don't know exactly how to prevent that. Um, maybe we look up debounce timing for input. Uh, oh. Cat user feedback, 500 milliseconds is a good point, a good starting point. almost instantly okay do hurt already trash threshold. Um, okay, so maybe around 400 or 500 milliseconds. Um, let's see, uh, there's not really anything else about this. Bounce timing for input. I guess maybe I don't know. I wish I could see more answers from the site. 
Um, how about save? Debound save for input. So this person, this they're not asking about timing though. Um, okay, how long reaction time? Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna go with like 500 milliseconds. I feel like that's going to cut down on errors. Um, you know, of like closing the tab right afterwards. Although I think if someone types something in, type, 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 they're probably going to wait a second. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let's make it a full second. Let's make it a full second. Um, I mean, a second isn't a long time. Okay, and then add that to there. Okay, so I think yes for that, and yes for that. Okay, don't trigger save on change. Okay. So now, brainstorm, is file upload easy enough to use? So, on this page, um, we have a file input, and you choose the file, it uploads, and you have to use this syntax to get it to work, right? So I guess the ideal syntax that we're thinking about changing to is something more like uh, this, and I don't know if this is actually easier. Um, but yeah, something like this. And let's just, for the sake of the syn syntax highlighting, let's just set these to empty strings. So is this easy enough to use? So you have to have a parent object. I guess the other thing we were thinking about is having this be able to be um, on the image. So if we switch from closest to nearest as the way that we find the, the, you know, the place to put the data, we can actually just put this directly on here. Then we also need this to be an object. Um, for some reason, this doesn't feel natural to me. Um, it doesn't feel like this should be connected to this. So I am going to stick with this. But the question is um, actually a little bit different. So um, basically, what I could do instead of this is have a button um, what would the button look like? So it'd, be, it'd just be like a you know a, a regular button and say like upload file and then we'd have a data I editable Um, we'd say uploaded image and maybe something like file upload, something like that. And when you clicked on this, it would trigger, I think it would trigger some kind of overlay like this. So when you click on this, this triggers an overlay. I think it would trigger maybe a non-dismissible overlay, one that you actually have to press the cancel button for. And it would say like, you know, drop 
drop your file here or click to you know browse your computer um, and then you would actually be able to see the progress uh, inline maybe eventually um, actually I'm curious what zindex this is this is zindex 9 <clears throat> and I believe our um, upload uh, why don't I have that? Oh, it's not in, yeah, it's not in the SAS file. It's in remake client side. Um, okay, cool. Um, so there's something here. We're adding a little attribute. I think it's here. No, we rem we moved it. Um, that's good to hear. Oh wow, that's a long time. That's awesome. Um, seems like uh, you you found a good match. Um, what's uh or yeah, it's been it's been a long time. Um, yeah, definitely. Um. What uh what have you been up to? Like what have you been working on any projects or anything or doing anything fun? Going on any any trips? Uh probably not recently, but Okay, what am I looking for here? Um So I was thinking about having some kind of file upload component here. Where it would say, oh yeah, I'm looking for the Z index. Okay, Z index. Upload notice. So nine. So we actually want this to be ten. So that it, you know, it will appear ab above a backdrop, if necessary. Okay. So we could have that file upload component there. That would be nice. It would be maybe simpler than this. I mean, the nice thing with this is you can style. I mean, you can style the file input anyways. Um, the nice thing with this is that buttons are actually easier to style. Um, and then you could have drag and drop here too. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what to do. I guess let's, uh, so this is just a research phase. Um, should it be a popover? Um, could have drag and drop. So let's research drag and drop file upload. Um, how to make, okay, here we go. Drag and drop, I like CSS tricks. Okay, so we've got some markup. We're gonna hide some stuff. Uh, visible, sure. Feature detection, um, let's see, can I use draggable, drag and drop, seven, what? Weird, it looks like, well, it's okay, so it's not supported by mobile Safari or Opera. It's not supported by mobile browsers, but that's fine. It's supported by desktop browsers and mobile browsers could just click. Okay. Is, 
advanced. Oh, okay, that's cool. Okay, so yeah, that's nice. This progressive enhancement. He's like checking to see if we have everything we need to do drag and drop. If so, we're going to add this class to the box and we're going to style it differently. Otherwise, we'll just style it as choose a file. That's cool. I like that. Um, okay, here we go. So then we got form on. Okay, so we prevent default. Okay, sure. Drop files, then we get the drop files. Yep. Okay, so it's a lot of work. Um, Ajax. Yeah. Okay. Ajax. Okay. So. Oh yeah, I think this is this would be fine. It doesn't really seem that crazy. Um. I don't think it would be that hard to do this. Um, do, 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 could have a non dismissible drag and drop area. Okay, so that's one option. I kind of like that. Although I'm not sure this syntax is going to make a lot of sense to people, but it's kind of nice that you don't have to style things, right? Because like here, this like choose file thing, it's, um, it's not, it doesn't look nice, right? Whereas if we implemented this, you could just have any button trigger the file upload. Now, what I do wonder is if there is any way to style this at all. Um, so if I do like display block with, uh, sorry, 100 px, height 100 px. What does that give us? And if we could do like a background of black now can I drag can I drop a file there? And will that work? So that does work. And if we yeah, if we make this one hundred percent, what happens then? I wonder if that's cross browser. The flying dev. Hey, how's it going? Um, it's going pretty well. Uh, I'm working on a file upload feature for a framework I've been working on for a while called uh, Remake. Uh, you can find it at remaketheweb.com. Um, and um, yeah. Oh, nice. On Maker Log a Telegram. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I love that. Uh, I love that community. Um, what do you What are you up to today? What are you working on? Are you Do you have a side project? And do you know if um, styling an input to be full width is cross browser compatible? Because <laughs> I'd be very interested in that. Um, ooh. Okay. So.
input or let's see file input style cross browser okay uh, how about drag and drop with native file input you've been uh, streaming your latest project, Thumbs Up News, feel free to link to that by the way, uh, using a classifier to classify headlines and show only good news. Oh nice, that's awesome. Unfortunately, can't help you with that. Uh, that's fine. Um, that's awesome. What kind of classifier are you using for that? As I saw the Google one a while ago, like five years ago, or I don't know, whenever they released that. Um, and it seemed super cool, like as a way to like moderate comments, basically. Um, you know, you could tell whether someone was being super negative or super positive and kind of like set a threshold of like, okay, people can't be too hateful, but like you can allow everything above that, right? That seemed really interesting to me. Um, Okay, I'm going to look at this. Uh, so, the issue with this is that, okay, you have these like drag enter, drag leave things. But like, what if I just want to use a normal file input? Don't really got a link now. Oh, okay, just working on backend stuff. You're just using NLTK and data sets to train a classifier on your own. Oh, nice. Nice. Get, get it up to 77 so far. And then Scrappy to get head. So, oh, okay. Oh, get it up. No, I don't know what that means. Got, got it up to 70. Oh, got it up to 77% so far. And then Scrappy, yep, to get headlines URLs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that was like a tool that you were using with the classifier. Okay, so, so I don't actually know what that means, like that you got it up to 77% so far. That is 77% accurate, maybe? Um, oh, thanks for, the thanks for the follow. Really appreciate that. Um, that's awesome, though. Um, I know there's a... Not that you would want to use this. I think it's awesome that you're doing it on your own. Um, but they, Google has one that seems pretty nice. Okay, nice, 77% accurate. So that when you put in a new news story uh, that you think is negative, it's it's catching that 77%. 77% of the time. Um, I don't know. They, Google used to have this cool demo about this. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, so to 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 file upload. So yeah, I. I don't know, I kind of want to just do it this way, and then, let's see, what else could I, uh, cause then, huh, well I don't know how to hide, oh I guess I could do opacity, opacity 0%. Okay, let's see if that works. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a drag and drop file uploader very easily. Yeah, that's awesome though. I mean, I think that's that's much more exciting to build your own. Um, hmm. I guess I should just do it the regular way. And I am kind of feeling, um, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, it's not a real drag and drop. This, I guess I'm, I'm thinking about doing it kind of like this, 
Um, but I kind of also want to just uh, um, use a file input because it just <laughs> like you can drag files into a file input. Um, like if you just drag a file on top of this, it'll just work. So I'm kind of I'm trying to like hack it, <laughs> like by making it uh, display block and like 100% width. But I'm not sure if it's gonna work cross browser, so I'm a little worried about that. But it's nice too because it it will also support clicking on it. I don't know. Maybe I should just like try it this way. It's like super hacky, but it's also kind of fun. Um, and then I don't have to build all this extra stuff around it. Um, dragging drag drop files into standard HTML input. Okay. Fill the file input with the right file names. What does can I use say? Well, so I think the the problem with this wouldn't be. Um, it wouldn't be dragging and dropping it into the file input. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's supported well. What I am worried about is if I'm making a file input display block and controlling its width and height, will all browsers respect that width and height as the new droppable area? Because some browsers, I imagine, would be very opinionated about where file inputs are so that you can't trick a user into uploading something, you know, and like faking them out, you know? I don't know. Some some browsers are really opinionated about that stuff, so that's what I'm worried about. Um, maybe, but yeah, I think if it's something the browser's opinionated about, they won't even let an important do anything. But I think the one one way to test this actually <laughs> would just be to uh, to test it. Um, so I do have Safari and Firefox, so I can on this computer, so I can just test it with that. I would be most worried probably about Edge, um, but we can deal with that as it comes up. Um, okay, so let's try this. We'll do style equals uh, these. Okay. And make sure, yep, it looks the same. Okay, so now we're going to open this in Safari and see what happens. Yeah, see, Safari, I think. Uh, hates me. <laughs> so far, hates the world. Um, so they won't let me change the opacity of it, and they'll keep this choose file thing there no matter what. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fair. I'm not gonna begrudge them that too much. Rubber Slayer, welcome to the chat. Um, so let's try it in Firefox. Firefox is. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh wait, no, maybe it did work. I thought it just like totally made it not work. Um, I'm trying to manipulate an ordinary file input into a drag and drop area so that I can like style it however I want. So it looks like Firefox kind of freaks out about it. It gives me a loading for a while and then it decides not to do anything. So let's just confirm well in Safari let's actually look at this. So yeah okay clicking on it would work. Ay ay ay. Um, and Firefox is freaking out. I don't think Firefox knows what the heck's going on. Um, which is kind of my fault. I mean, I'm trying to hack it a little bit. But let's see. Let's open it up again. 
let's make sure it's not freaking out in general. Uh, that it's fine with like Google. Okay, it's not freaking out in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think file inputs might be a little different though. Um, like they might have even stronger opinions of, about it, so you, you can't even reset them at all. Although, yeah, we see that with Safari, right? They're not letting me even change the opacity of it. Um, where are my dev tools? Open up dev tools. Safari. Uh, inspect. Um, and Safari is weird sometimes. How do I see the styles on this? I want to see like the sidebar thing. Oh, here we go. Styles. So yeah, I have opacity set to 0%. But it's, there's no check mark next to it. And it says... It has a warning thing next to it. Unsupported property value. So you can't set opacity on a file input in Safari. So let's go to Chrome. Let's search for styling file input. Customing, okay, CSS tricks again. Love CSS tricks. Visibility hidden. Oh. Okay, let's see. Um, Oh, they have a custom style sheet here, I think. Annoying. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just, I just want to break access to the regular CSS. Um, so where is this select some files? Is that the default text? No. Where, so where is that coming from? Select. Oh, okay, here this before custom file input custom file input okay before okay color black display inline block inline gradient uh huh okay let's see if this works in um safari Uh, let's close this. It does work in Safari. So the next question is, what if I do, what is this? Is that a, that's just an ad? It's just an ad. Okay, so what if I do, I've never seen an ad in, uh, in CodePen before. I think it's because I have, I usually have ad block. Oh man. Yeah, uh, cross browser compatibility is a nightmare. Um, so let's try 50 and 80 for the padding. And it still works. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's uh, go back here. We'll do 50 and 80. And we'll save it to our own pen. And then we're going to try opening this up in uh, Firefox. Uh, more secure encrypted DNS lookups. Disable. Okay, and then there's nothing in <laughs> there's nothing in Firefox. What? Just browse. Thanks, Firefox. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's too much padding. I don't think it's gonna matter. I think, oh, 
Okay, I don't care about that. Okay, so, um, no, I don't think they cared. What do you mean only HTML? Um, so, yeah, so you're, you're asking, what do I mean by Remake allows you to build web apps in only HTML? So, um, granted, it is a tiny bit of a stretch of the truth because you you have to use templating, right? You have to use handlebars templating in order to insert, um, you know, variables into your template. Um, but other than that, uh, Remake is pretty much 100% HTML, and actually all of the functionality built into Remake is built around data attributes. So data attributes add data to the page, um, they make the page, uh, or items on the page sortable, they make um, individual items editable, so you're using regular HTML for what you would normally use, like, JavaScript for in like a framework like React or Vue, you know, where you're storing data in objects and arrays and Remake, you're just storing data directly in the DOM uh, and telling Remake how that data is stored using data attributes. So state management, saving data, editing data, reordering data, deleting data, all of that is handled by data attributes. Um, and it's just all native HTML. Um, so you can do all of those operations, all of those CRUD operations, creating, reading, updating, deleting, uh, you know, as well as sorting, um, you know, drag and drop sorting with just HTML. So this is a full to-do application in Remake. Um, you can see the CSS here and the data here. And when you update something here, so you add a new to-do item, drag it to the top, you can see the data just automatically updates here. It's just mirrored. Um, based on the structure of the HTML. So it's pretty good, it's pretty flexible. You can do a lot of powerful things with it and you can build web apps faster, than, like 10 times faster than any other technology I've used. Um, it's not the most flexible, so like you don't wanna build a social network with Remake, but if you're building you know, a website builder, this is probably the fastest thing you could use to do that. Um, yeah, by far, I would say. Um, and it allows you to build web apps, so it's for tons of users, right? You could ship a web app that you made to like a thousand users. So it's not really competing with CMSs where you have to deploy like a new CMS for every new user and then keep the CMS up to date across all those users and maintain it and do backups and all that. You know, this is just a single instance that you can ship to thousands or even millions of customers um, and you'll be good. Uh, so that, yeah, that's a quick, <laughs> quick little pitch for Remake. Um, okay, so I think this doesn't work with Firefox. So let's see this one. I want to see how this looks in Firefox. How did they get it to be styled? Whoa, weird as heck, right? So the they they figured it out. That's awesome. Okay, let's look at W WTF forms. I'm just curious like how they did it, you know? These are nice. I like these. Those are nice. Ugh. Yeah, I want to use these in all my projects. Um, it's like very usable, very nice. Okay, we wrap the input and label so the custom controls properly can properly trigger the file browser. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So this might not actually work um, how we're expecting. So here, this is the label. Um, so let's see. So if I do change view, I just want to get the full page view. So if I inspect this, 
Okay, so the input's up there. The label's wrapping it all. So if you click anywhere on the label, like down here, that's going to trigger the file input. But what about if I drop a file into the label? I don't think that's going to work. Nothing, right? So I, de I definitely dragged it into the label. But if I drag it into the file input, it will work. So you can see this file input is right there. Um, so let's try dragging it in, in, up a little bit further. Nope, still didn't work. <laughs> I think that actually might be because the the label or the span, the span is on top of it. Okay, so we want to find somewhere where the the input um, is uh, not blocked off by the span. So we'll, we'll go for that top right one. Uh, let's see. So let's drag it right here. It still didn't work. Um, no, I don't know. It's just not working at all. Um, let's see uh, file input. Can I even drag and drop? Uh, in Firefox, I can. I can. I can drag it directly onto a browse control. Weird. Well, I don't know. I think yeah, this is probably a rabbit hole that's not worth going down. Although, wait, this did work. Oh my goodness. I for this did work, or it didn't work. Did it work? It did work. So I guess Firefox is just laggy before. It did work. I didn't know it worked. Okay, and then if I do this, <laughs> that doesn't work <laughs> at all. No, it doesn't do anything. It just doesn't do anything. Um, well, it's different. It's much different for different browsers. So, like Firefox allows me to expand the area, but not drag and drop something into the expanded area. But I wonder if they'll let me drag and drop it up here. No, but they'll let me click on it to trigger a file input, but not drag and drop. Then for Safari. Um, it's a much different story. So they actually do support some ways of restyling the input. Uh, if we do like visibility hidden, they won't let me hide the input with uh, opacity directly on the input. So I can't put opacity directly on the input, but I can style this custom pseudo element called WebKit file upload button. So what I was thinking is, okay, if I can style this, I'll use that for WebKit, you know, for, you know, Chrome and Safari. And then for Firefox, I'll use a different strategy. But Firefox doesn't even allow you to drag and drop into the expanded input, even though they do let you drag and drop directly into uh, a file input normally. So basically, um, just back to square one, I, <laughs> I have to actually use um, drag and drop, you know, like the na like, I can't hack the input, basically. They don't like you hacking the input element. They, that's why they built drag and drop into, um, that's why they built drag and drop. I really like this a lot. I'm going to pin that. Um, that's why they built drag and drop into the browser. So, so it's not like I can't do this. Um, I just have to actually build it all out, uh, which is, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, it's just a little bit of a hassle. It's just a little bit of a hassle. So I think it would be good. I'm not sure how soon I will do it. Um, so features. So it should be like drop file, 
uh, hover or like file hover style. So like when the file is hovering above it, there should be something um, that shows that it's hovering above it. Single file, not multiple. And click to select file. Um, and I would like to do this, but the question is, is, is it worth it? I think it is kind of worth it because if I'm thinking, uh, let's, so let's delete this um, special style. So if I'm thinking about this regular file input, it's fine. You know, it, it works. It's okay. But it's not ideal. If I'm building a web app, I just want to be able to put a button in there that's going to trigger a really nice file input that people can drag and drop into and it looks nice and they can click into. And it's just styled nicely by default, right? You're getting these extra features, the drag and drop, you know, the, the ability to save it um, or cancel out of it. So that is kind of nice. I'm not sure if it's necessary for releasing this feature. And the syntax does, uh, does disappoint me a little bit. I like the data I editable, editable tag. I like that, you know, it supports infinite arguments and that the first one is the key name you want to edit. And then inside you're saying, you know, how you want to edit it. But I think before you get used to it, it is a lot to take in, you know? It's, I mean, it's just as bad as like a regular file input, to be honest, but, um, and it has a lot more functionality because it's actually, you know, uploading it somewhere. I don't know, I guess once you get used to it, it's okay. I just don't know what else, like how else to do it, I guess. I guess it could be an alternate syntax I could think of is maybe, not that we would do this right now uh, or in the foreseeable future, but I could see something like data I key uploaded image and then you specify how that's going to be edited. So then it's like file upload, something like that. And then you don't need this extra data I editable. It's just telling you, yeah, we want to change this key and we want to do it with file upload. And then you can have multiple, right? Yeah. I think that actually might be better than having this like parsable string in here, but it's fine for now. It's fine. Okay, so we're done brainstorming that. Um, I do want to do it, uh, but it's probably like a multi-day, two-day project. Um, so I guess I do want to release this file upload feature separately from, from this. I think this is definitely something I want to do in the future, but for now, it's, I think it's okay without it. Okay, so data L key uploaded image. Okay, so this is something I was thinking about for a while. So the way this code works, is it's going to look for, oh, and by the way, uh, D2, are you still here? D26228912, did I answer your question about only HTML? Um, so this syntax means we're going to look for the data in a location, um, and the key name we're going to end up with is uploaded image. And where we're going to look is inside uh, the closest image. Um, you know, that's inside this element. And we're going to look at the source property. And what I want to change that to 
is the ability, first of all, to just say image and without, without this target part. So if I just say image, I want that to act as a selector and just find the first image inside of here. And I want it to know to change the source because the type of element is an image. And by default, you should be editing the source of an image. You shouldn't be editing the ID or the class or the inner text or inner HTML of an image because uh, you would never do that in web app. Most of the time when you're editing an image in a web app, you're editing the source. So I would just default to editing the source. Then the next part would be, if that was true, we could just add this data L target and then remove this selector um, because that's already built in. Uh, you know, the data location key is going to automatically look for a data location target that matches, you know, the same name, right? So this uploaded image part. Uh, and that's where it's going to look for the source of its data. So I do really, really like this idea. Um, defaults. Default to thorny ground says, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> Right now I'm brainstorming features for Remake, uh, kind of like thinking through the, the, er, the like developer you know, usability, the usability of the framework from the developer perspective, and just trying to make a few things a little bit easier. Um, thorny ground. Um, so yeah, I'm that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, and it, oh, it's for a framework called Remake, and Remake lets you build web apps uh, entirely using, or mostly using HTML. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much just only HTML. Um, uh, okay, so default to editing certain attributes based on the element type. Okay, so image should be source. Um, trying to think <laughs> what other elements are there. Only HTML? Why? Um, that's a good, so that's a good question. Uh, why only HTML? Well, because um, I, I think that uh, the, the, I think, I don't think HTML has been updated for the modern era of building web apps. I don't think, uh, data is meant to be stored in HTML. I don't think HTML is dynamic enough. I think HTML is built for building static documents and that's not enough for 2020. In 2020, HTML should be more flexible, be more dynamic, be able to store data in it. Um, I think it's absurd that it that we're still, you know, basically hacking the DOM. I mean, if you look at frameworks like React and, and Vue.js, they're just like, you know, a, a hundred kilobytes of, of JavaScript on top of the natural DOM. Why is that necessary? Um, it feels absurd to me. So I think HTML should be more powerful by default, um, and I'm working to make that true so that HTML is, you know, a true programming language for web applications instead of just, you know, like a, a way to make static documents. Um, and I, I don't think it's that hard to do. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I think it'll make building web apps a lot, a lot faster. I think for example, you know, I was able to build uh, a Trello uh, clone in about like, I don't know, 20 minutes. Um, Cause all the data is just right on the page. Um, you know, the backend's already built out and the data automatically syncs to the backend. So, you know, it, having HTML be the only source of truth means I don't have to get stuck in, you know, framework hell, setting up Webpack. I don't have to, you know, like, worry about state management and, you know, Ajax calls and validating every single piece of data. All I have to do is just write some HTML and everything's set. Um, does that answer your question? Um, different 
types of HTML elements. So um, I'm, I'm looking up all the HTML elements. Oh, they have a plain text one. This is cool. Oh, it's uh, it's um, obsolete. What is this plain text? Renders everything following the start tag as raw text, ignoring any following HTML. That's really cool. No embed element is non-standard way to provide alternate. Huh. Okay. So let's see. Oh yeah, we want anchor tags to default to setting the, the href, I think. I'm not sure. I think it should actually probably be inner text for anchor tags. Um, yeah. Uh, HTML also makes it more challenging as well. Seems like a good learning exercise. Um, well, the idea would be to make it actually easier. Well, okay, so throwing, throwing ground, to be fair, I am, I'm using a lot of JavaScript, but I'm using a lot of JavaScript so other people don't have to use JavaScript um, so that they can just do it in HTML. Um, and to answer your question, the flying dev, uh, the idea is for it to be very challenging for me but not for other developers. So, you know, once you learn maybe like nine or 10, uh, you know, different attributes um, from Remake, you should be able to build, you know, a full stack, fully functional web application in like a half an hour. Yeah, but like, I'm not just doing this as kind of a learning exercise for me. I really am trying to turn this into, you know, like a really popular, really good framework that a lot of people use and, you know, make money off of it. Uh, thank you, Thorny Ground, for following. I really appreciate that a lot. Um, so I think actually for anchor tags, I don't want to use href. I think it's going to be inner text. Okay, so let's see. Title. Uh, body. Nice. Um, yeah, there's a, actually, if you go to remaketheweb.com, there's a really good uh, tutorial or not tutorial but like explanation and you can kind of get like a walkthrough of the code uh, there if you're interested um, okay these are all going to be inner text um, anchor tag pool. I think these are just all inner text I don't know why I would want to set anything but inner text for most elements. I guess image is the main one where <laughs> I just want to set the source. Um, time. Never seen time used in the wild. Var. Oh, that's cool. WVR. I think if this element was supposed to be deprecated. I'm wondering why it's not listed below. I guess it maybe was undeprecated. The last time I looked at this, I think it said it was going to be deprecated. It's actually super useful. Oh no, WBR. No, this isn't the one. Sorry. <laughs> this is a word break opportunity. No, this was never going to be deprecated. Uh, why am I confusing it with? Um, okay, before I continue here, I just want to figure out which one I was... Oh, for some reason... For some reason, I was confu confusing WBR with XMP. I guess when you don't know things well enough, they're, you know, you'll confuse them with things that aren't even that similar. Um, okay, area audio. Audio, yeah, let's look at audio and video. Map. That's cool. Huh. That's really cool. Okay, embed. 
iframe uh, picture script table table content uh, but in I think these are all inner text form I, I don't know why you would want to edit a form I guess probably I don't know I don't know why that's the top of my head progress select text area interactive elements details dialogue Menu summary. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think it's inner text for most of them. You know what's really sad is that center is deprecative. I love center. It displays its block level or inline content centered horizontally. <laughs> it's just like a really simple way to do that. And now when you have things like Tailwind you know, CSS coming back, it's like, you know, is it really that bad? But it'll probably be around for a while because uh, so many people use it. But I don't know why you want to deprecate all these things. They kind of seem cool. Strike, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool. This is cool too. No break. Like, why? Why not? Like, why deprecate it? I don't understand. You know, like, sure. You know, don't encourage using it, but like, why deprecate it? Um, okay. So I guess for audio, we want source. For video, it's probably the same. Okay, um, for iframe, I don't know what we want to do here. We'll just... <laughs> um, I don't know, iframe, I guess, it doesn't make sense to do inner text. So we'll just do source, I guess. I don't know exactly what the use case is for that, but... That's fine. Picture, oh, picture isn't going to have something on itself. It's going to have the source and the image inside of it. So that's okay. And then for script, we're going to have source. Um, and I guess for style, actually, too. Or no, not style, link. Uh, link, I think we're going to have href. I don't know what case you're, you're using remake to like edit iframes or script tags, but eh, whatever. Um, it could happen. Okay, so we'll, we'll say those things are good. Um, brainstorm using nearest instead of closest everywhere. So I actually kind of already brainstormed this. Ooh, I was kind of, I was thinking about, um, sorry about that stretch. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking about having this on this. And I was saying that it didn't feel natural. It didn't feel like this button was going to edit this image and that it might actually make more sense to have components kind of be higher level than the things they're editing and just enforce that um, instead of having it look for the nearest one which would involve looking at its parent and then looking at that parent's children and then recursively doing that over and over again until it finds a match for its data. I think it's a cool concept to find the nearest one, but I think it doesn't, it's a hard way to think about it, first of all. 
And I think it doesn't really make sense in terms of like, I don't know, it kind of makes sense. I mean, I guess I could see it if, I could see it if, you know, I mean, you could put this on the div, right? But if you don't put it on the div, then yeah, it probably should just look for the closest one that it can find and put its data in there. I don't know. I mean, basically, if you guys are curious, this is kind of what I'm thinking about. So if you have like an element that's working as a component, so it's basically like a, a date component, right? So we'll say like a date picker component. Um, and this is a div, right? So we, we have a div that's acting as a, as a date picker component. And then inside of that, you have an input that's, you know, the, the date picker input. And you have other things in here, right? Like maybe, you know, you're using some kind of, we'll just call it an image, right? To display a map, right? And then maybe you have like some controls down here. Um, you know, another input that's like controls for zooming, right? Something like that. So if this is your date picker component, then where do you expect the data to go from the, oops, from the date picker? So if you edit this date picker, um, and we'll just say like new value is like 11, 18, 20, 16, right? Where should this value be stored? Um, if it's not on the input itself. Um, and I would argue that it should be stored at this top level. It doesn't really make sense to store it you know, either at this top level or like at an even higher level, you know, where you're talking, where, you know, maybe it's some other component, like master component for like, uh, I don't know, we'll just say like time selection component. So I, I could see it like going up here uh, or like we'll say like date range selection component. So like I could see it going up here, the data, right? As like a start, a start date, right? I could see it going on here. Um, I don't know why there's a map. It probably should be like a graph. I, but I don't understand why it would be on the graph. Like, uh, or we can say it's a calendar. Like, I don't think we would store this new value on the calendar on a neighboring thing. Hey, Black Arrow 247, welcome to the stream. Um, and I and I wouldn't also think it would go on like some kind of like random like data store, you know, here. I think it should probably live above. But the question is, is, you know, if some newer programmer comes in and they say, you know, actually, I want to store it right here. Is that really a problem? Is, you know, you can have best practices in a framework, but allow other things to happen. And I guess the question is, is that a road I want to go down? Or do I want to enforce that, hey, if you have data inside of a component, you have to store that data, or at least reference it uh, on the actual higher level component. Um, and I think, at least for now, the way Remake is built, it should probably be up there. But there have been some times, like here, where it would kind of be nice 
Hmm. Okay, flying dev. Have fun at work, and uh, yeah, enjoy your, enjoy your day. I'll see you later. Bye. Um, cause like this, I mean, basically, we'd just be cutting out one attribute here if we allowed this to ha if we allowed a neighboring element to store the state. And is that worth it? I think not. I think it has to be at a higher level. Hey, J Louise, uh, welcome to the stream. So I think we're going to say no to this. Um, we'll say doesn't feel natural. Um, higher level or like data should live on a higher level component. It doesn't feel right that a uh, neighboring component would contain data. Okay. New release with changelog, add file upload to features page. Let's both file upload feature. Okay, so let's go back through these real quick. So trigger save on change as default. Yes, we want to do that. So let's do it. So um, let's open up GitHub, make sure I haven't made any irreversible changes. Nope, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna uh, have trigger save on change be the default. So let's search client side for this. And actually, you know what I want to do? <laughs> I want to change the directory of this cache because um, it annoys me to no end that I can't just search this directory. Um, so we got to go into our asset bundler. Um, and we got to find a uh, parcel. So parcels here. It's parcel here. Nope. Okay. So this is where parcel is. Okay. And we're running it in three different places. Oh. Okay, we're running it when we need to recompile. We're running it on the initial. Wait, is it only two? Oh. It's not six matches, it's just, it's just two. Uh, why isn't it? There we go, three out of four matches. Okay, so yeah, we're running it when we need to recompile and on the initial load. Now, where do we put parcel cache directory? CLI, oh, let's see what they said about this. Oops make cache directory path <laughs> in what situations would this be useful I hate that um, to use the default cache folder I use for all those scripts or because cache is already used for another script Okay, so it's uh, it's available. <laughs> Cache directory. Oh, and I could also do no cache. Well, okay, that didn't give me a lot. 
Huh. I wonder... Do I have another cache directory? Okay. Oh, God. So, is it at the top level too? It is at the top level. That's annoying. Huh. Okay, parcel cache directory. Cache directory. So the problem with this is that um, I'm actually uh, building from two different directories and I want to change I want to change it, but it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Well, okay, because I'm building at two different levels, right? I'm building at the at the remake framework level, which is why I think I get this cache up here. Although I'm not sure exactly why I got that cache there. And then I'm building. I'm outputting into um, I don't know I'm building here I guess and I'm building this one I'm building this index JS and then I'm also building what am I building out here I don't know what exactly I'm building out here I'd be very curious to know when this was most recently ended in Yesterday, okay. So pretty recent. <laughs> Who is this remake streamer? <laughs> um, welcome, Oblivionaire. Do you, uh, uh, the, my most exciting day in the next like three years will be when someone else streams remake. <laughs> That will be amazing. Um, but yeah, Oblivion Air, how's it going? What, welcome back to the stream, dude. How are you? How are you doing? Just finished work. Whoa, it's eleven a.m. here. Uh, I'm just starting work. I'm just starting my day. Um, I've been streaming for almost a couple hours. Oh wow, five p.m. there. What, what, uh, where are you? You must be in, uh, Eastern Europe? Is that true? That must, uh, maybe East, or wait, <laughs> North, <laughs> South, no, what, is it West? No, Eastern, yeah. You're on, <laughs> you're on a space station. Okay, nice. Um, so, yeah, how, uh, what do you, Central Europe, okay, cool. What do you do? Um, you're a programmer, right? I think. Uh, but I guess, like, how are you doing? Are you, um, how are you coping with this, uh, this time in, uh, in life with uh, the corona plague? Okay, so let's go ahead and ask a bundler. Close this file. Okay. You are still just writing tests. You work from home. Well, that's good that you work from home. That's awesome. Um. So your you your main job is to write tests for. Um, to make sure, like, I'm actually, I'm sorry, I forget if you told us before. 
would you write tests for like a, an automated system or something to make sure um, it's working? Okay, it's your first job in this field and you just started. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Um, so you're writing tests to like, make, to like make sure other people's code works, but then they're also looking at your tests to make sure you understand what you're testing. So it's kind of like, it's a good way to get started. Oh, okay, you have TypeScript. Yeah, TypeScript is a little, a little tough. Uh, not that I really would know because I'm not a TypeScript expert by any means. Um, okay, so I'm gonna console log file path here, and we're not in production, so. Uh, we'll do that there, parcel, and let's do this here. Okay, and then let's start this back up. Okay, um, okay, so I think we've got our two directories. We've got dot app, no, sorry, slash app, slash asset, slash js, slash main. Okay. And then we've got, man, I can't even see these. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Okay, so now we've got fours before them, so we actually know which ones they are. Okay, then we've got app assets JS remake and net. Okay. So I think I want Where can I put these? Yeah, let's just put them in the asset bundler. Uh or I don't know. So there's two different ones. I wonder if uh I wonder if it's going to get confused if I put them both in the same directory. Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Um, So, app assets, and then it's opening that to this. Huh. I don't know where to put these. <sighs> I guess what we could do is, um, There is somewhere where we're doing a, a make make sure. Uh, Slack station, welcome. So let's see. We've got make sure uh, sync on the disk directory. So I'm gonna also do at turning. Um, make derp sync 
And I think all I have to do is just do um, dot slash uh, um, cache one and cache two. And huh. the thing is, how do I even differentiate these? I mean, I guess I could search <sighs> to see if one had like the name remake in it, but that's not, I mean, people should be able to just change this if they want the name. I guess we'll just put them in the same We'll just put them in the same folder and see and see what happens. Um, okay, so let's uh, yeah, let's just put them in the same folder and see what happens. So when we do npx parcel build, um when we say out directory, we're also going to say dash dash cache directory. And we're going to have that equal to dot slash asset bundler. Um, Okay. What the heck? Where is my other console go? I guess I didn't have one. Okay, whatever. Okay, so that might work. <laughs> Um, let's try it. So I'm going to delete this cache, or actually let's, uh, let's stop the bundler. Let's delete this cache. Yes. And let's delete, um, geez, where is it? It's, <laughs> it's inside of remake, client side. Okay. We'll delete this cache. Delete it. Okay. Then we'll run these. And let's see what happened. Oh, okay. So put it right inside of Asset Bundler. Okay, well, so I, I made a small mistake. Um, let's grab these and discard those. Yeah. Okay. And let's um let's change it to slash cash dot cash. Okay, and let's try again. Okay. Now I have a dot cache. I also have these folders. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go into GitHub and remove these. So we've got to go into our Atlas asset bundler. Um, oh no. Uh, well, let's uh, commit this code first, and then we can delete all these files so that we, we know we're not losing anything. Um, I'm curious why none of these things are, sh like the cache isn't showing up. I think it's probably because it's my git ignore. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, and then we don't have the cache in our old place, right? Client side, it's not there anymore. Um, 
and it's not at the top level either. That's great. Um, let's uh, uncheck this real quick and let's just say Z index for upload notice. And then process file, we're going to say change parcels um, cache directory. Okay. Cool. And now we're going to delete this stuff. So let's see. I think this is all good to go. Deleted. Okay, cool. So there, that's good. That's awesome. That makes it easier to search remake. Uh, I do want to move this dot sessions file. Okay, express dot session. File store store dir name. Um, so we're gonna move this up a level and yeah I'm fine with that I'm fine I mean it's better than having it in here so let's delete this and let's look at our git ignore for sessions Okay. I think we can just do that. I think that'll work. There's, there's nothing we need in sessions, I think. Okay, so um, that's good. And we'll say moved sessions folder. Um, unfortunately, when I deploy this, this is going to wipe out everyone's sessions unless we move them first. Um, probably okay, because this is kind of a newer framework. But we're also going to log out as soon as I refresh here, I think. Yeah. Okay. 